All right, good morning. Welcome, God's Got Good News Church, this beautiful, hot, last day of the month. It's like, we couldn't expect it to get warmer, but uh, it did. So anyway, as we open today, I want to open in prayer. Father God, as we come before you this morning, may this message fall on ears that need to hear. Father, even those who will hear it and turn it off, may a word from the Holy Spirit touch their heart and that they would decide to leave it and to just listen for that time, Father. We just give you the honor and glory, Lord. And again, Father, we put before you this Sunday, we put before you this message. Father, we just honor you and glorify your mighty name. Truly, we do nothing of our own. It's all through you, Father God. We thank you and praise you. Father, we give you the honor and the glory. May everyone that has ears here, may it set in their heart, Father, what we're going to talk about today. Father, we just thank you and we praise you. Father, we give you the honor and the glory in the mighty name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. All right. So here we are, last Sunday of the month. We're now getting ready to hit into July. I know between now and the 4th, uh, won't really be much communication between us, so I just put it before you that you, while uh, you're out there, that you just be safe, okay? If you're traveling, be safe. Um, allow yourself drive time. Don't be in a hurry. And remember that uh, it's not always you that you have to you have to look out for the other driver. And we know that a lot of drinking and driving this time will come to pass, and a lot of people will will drink and drive. So just be careful out there, okay? Okay. All right. Last week, our for announcements. Okay, we still do deliverance here. If you're needing it, you want to understand more, just stay tuned to us as these summer months go on. We're going to get more into that type of stuff of talking about deliverance and talking about who we fight and talking about what they do. All this stuff we're talking about right now is to lead you into the prep phase so that you understand that uh, we talked last week about sin we talked about sin being an immoral act considered to be a transgression against divine law but we went a little bit deeper we talked about moral anarchy we talked about anarchy being a state of disorder due to the absence or non-recognition of authority or other controlling systems. that We have that going on right now in our world, my friend. If you can't see it, your eyes are closed. It's going on in our world right now. Disorder due to the absence or non-recognition of authority. We see that in our major cities. It is History repeats itself. We saw it in Sodom and Gomorrah. And now we're seeing it now. We're seeing the same sins now. So what you have to do is decide what you're going to do about it. Okay? And we talked about moral. The concern with the principles of right and wrong behavior. The goodness or badness of human character. Now, I say this that we are, when we're born as a baby, we are born with a sinful nature because of the transgression and the sin of Adam and Eve. And what that means is that you have the, the chance because of being, because of that sin, that generational curse that passes down through the generations, that you now have that sinful nature in you. And then you as parents have the obligation by the word of God to train up your child, teach them right and wrong, Teach them respect. And you're going to see as we go through today that it's your responsibility to teach them right and wrong. If you don't teach them and they end up 
in trouble, in jail. Go to that mirror and look in and you'll see who it is. It's you. Because you have to. You're, I'm going to say this and I know some of you are going to hear it. Some of you are going to think that I'm, why am I talking like this? Your child doesn't need to be your friend. They'll have friends, he or she will have friends through life. What they need is a parent. They need someone to teach them right and wrong. To tell them when they're wrong. To love them, nurturing them, but not their friend. Okay? It's important that we remember that. The last thing we talked about last week, we talked about in moral anarchy, each person treats other persons exclusively as means to further his own or her own ends or, obje or objectives. We have moral anarchy in today in society. People who work out there just to put themselves ahead of others. And a lot of times they'll stamp on people's toes. They will offend people. They don't care about feelings. They don't care about anything but their own goals. You don't believe it's so? Just look around you. Think about stuff going on in, in, in politics. All this stuff, and you'll see that it's correct, okay? As we now start into today's teaching, I just want to make one statement. And this one statement is a fact. It's in the Bible. And what it is is that as a Christian, you cannot be possessed or fully ruled by a demon. Once you give your life to Christ, the Holy Spirit's in you, you cannot be possessed or fully ruled by a demon. However, you can be harassed, oppressed, or guided by demonic spirits. It comes in the forms of sickness, poverty, lack, addictions. Just to name a few. I just want to put this out there because it's going to lead into further teachings in this summer that's going to be important for you as we do as the Lord tells us to do. A stronghold is formed when a wrong pattern of thinking by a believer. After a stronghold is formed, it can be used by an unclean spirit to influence a believer's actions, habits, and lifestyle. Now, it can be in the forms of addiction, poverty, lack, sickness. But the enemy, you're wrong thinking. Oh, it's okay for me to drink. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't really get drunk, Pastor. I'm not an alcoholic. But I do get drunk. And I can show you in the Bible where it says you're not supposed to do that. But you won't listen because of your own sin. The enemy has already got a stronghold in you that it's okay. I don't hurt anybody. But you do. You hurt yourself. In a lot of incidences, you hurt your family. If you're married, you, that affects your children. It affects your wife, your husband. Okay? So, so don't think it doesn't affect anybody. It does. Okay? So that's just to give you a little bit about what's to come. Today, we want to talk about the seven deadly sins. Now, as we cover through each one, we're not going to do all of them today. We're only going to do the first four because of time. This is our end of month. If you know how we do business, at the end of month we normally have a meal after church, Holy Communion. We're prepared for that today, but we want you to really listen and, and understand these deadly sins. And and I'm going to, even even as I give you a definition, each one I'm going to take you a little bit deeper. Plus, I'm going to back it up with scripture. Okay, because that's what we do. That's what we have to do. That's why we're given the Word of God. It is a living Bible. Okay, so we first start off this morning with our first deadly sin. It's called lust. Okay, it's called lust. 
and its lust is an intense or unrestrained sexual craving or an overwhelming desire or craving. Lust is especially, essentially, to crave something usually associated with a worldly desire of sexual intent or material possession. I want you to tell you right now that most people, when they hear about lust, they automatically associate it with sex. Because that's what our world tries to do. It tries to get people to, to think in that aspect. But if you um, have an intent to lust for material items, I have to have a house. I have to. But the difference is, do I live within my means of a house? Or do I go and get the biggest, the best, is most expensive that I can squeak by paying for? so that people will think highly of me. Now that lust will also make me want to now have cars. And I say cars because a lot of times we want more than one. If a husband and wife, two cars, that's not an issue, but guys. I'm not saying you can't have two cars or three cars. But if that now becomes your obsession to possess, I know there's people out there I know there's famous people out there that will have 30 or 40 cars. And their thing is they want to possess the most erotic cars that they can get their hands on. We all know that they can't drive them all at the same time, number one. Number two, if they get too much high, high mileage on them or an accident, they lose value. So now these things tend to sit around to show people. You'll see some famous people will show you their showroom. And I'm not mentioning any names. But they'll show you their showroom and you'll see all these cars sitting in there and most of them they don't even drive. And if they drive them, it might be a mile because they don't want to kill the value of that thing. That's a possession. God doesn't say you can't have a nice car, okay? He doesn't say you can't have a nice truck. But when you're loading up your yard with these cars, or you're loading up your house with video games, or you're loading up your house with um, materialistic stuff, then it becomes material possession. I, I, I'll give you an example. I used to collect baseball cards back in the uh, 90s. I used to collect, I used to go on a Saturday or Sunday. Now, mind you, I'm not in the position I'm in now. But I would go and I would spend the day buying and selling cards and putting those cards in a collection so that I could have them. But you're, the one thing about these things is that you don't want people to touch them because they might mess them up and then they lose value. It's a possession. I think when I got rid of my cards and I gave most of them away, <coughs> excuse me, when I got rid of my cars, I, cards, I had probably 15 or 20,000 cards. Okay? And I had some money in it. I'm not going to lie. I had some money in it. You go buy a wax set cards, one box, maybe, I don't know, 30 cards, maybe more, I can't remember, I'm, like I said, I haven't been doing that since the 90s, um, you pay $30 back then, out of that $30, you may find one or two cards that are worth some money, the other ones, you may turn around and sell for five cents at the flea market. Back then, I, like I said, I don't know if they do it now. I'm just talking about back then. So, in reality, what I would spend and what I would get back wasn't even close, okay? It wasn't even close. So I wasted money. I'm going to be honest with you. I wasted money. 
but also this lust can be sexual and, and it goes that we have to cover that okay exactly it can be the lust for a woman or a man if it's your husband or wife it is normal to have that craving but if you're a single person and that's all you think about is the next one then you have an unrestrained sexual craving and I'm not even talking yet about what this opens that'll be something that'll come but there's things that you open when you do this men women that later on we'll get into that you'll start to understand that when we talk about being oppressed even as a Christian you fornicating will open doors that and I know when I start talking about it some of you go oh yeah I've heard this yeah I've heard this but I'm telling you I'm going to take you to a deeper spiritual level on it to where you'll start to understand hopefully a little bit more okay but let's go to our first scripture today our first scripture comes to us from Matthew chapter 5 verse 28 and it says but I say to you that whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart so when you look and you think it's innocent it's really not my friend because now you put that that thought into your head and let me tell you that as a deadly sin the enemy is going to use it it's going to use it it may not be for that same person you just lusted over but it's going to be for something else with the sole principle of taking you down out of what God has called you to do he will do it I promise you that's what he does remember John 10 10 a he comes but to steal kill and destroy that's his mission he'll do little things to get you to sin to bigger things and before you know it men women that lust after someone else if you're married will eventually can eventually I'm not saying it does but it can eventually lead to adultery and we all know that, that that's another sin okay so the next one our next scripture comes to us from 1st John chapter 2 verse 16 and it says for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh the lust of the eye and the pride of life is not of the father but of this world so when men and women you say well you know it's kind of like in my nature you know I, 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 it just happens I, I, I can't control it I don't know what to do with it it is because you're out of the will of God you're walking in the world in the flesh and you say you don't understand I don't know if I could do it Jesus did it and Jesus said we could do what he did and even greater so if Jesus could do it so can you don't allow the enemy to plant that stuff in your mind and allow you to circumvent what is right or wrong okay don't allow the enemy to do that because he'll do it it's what he does it's what he likes to do throw you off key to get you to sin a little first it might be just the lust of the eye you're looking now I'm not saying that if someone walks by you that you can't look and then look back that's not what I'm saying we've heard of glares we heard of staring okay when you stare is three to five seconds that's a stare so men women it's a stare if you look and then you look again but then you look again my friends you're lusted you may not call it lust call it what you think you want to call it but you're lusted okay once maybe even twice maybe you thought you saw something okay but I'm telling you, when you start repeating, you start sinning. And then Satan is going to allow you to see things. 
Trust me. He's going to allow you to see things that's going to get you to look again. So just be mindful of that. The next one we want to talk about is gluttony. Okay? Gluttony is the sin associated with unhealthy indulgence in material delights. Usually food. Usually food. However, it's not just eating to excess. But it can include drinking, screen time, lustful thoughts, and behaviors. Similar types of obsession like love for material pleasures, gaming, hours and hours and hours. It is creating an idol out of something material, but normally it's often consumable. When you, when normally when they portray gluttony, they'll show some uh, extremely heavy person eating food, but I'm telling you, yes, it's gluttony, but no, it is not the only type of gluttony. Gluttony, remember I just told you, it's an unhealthy indulgence. In material delight. If you're gaming five days a week and you're gaming six to seven hours, during that time you are lusting. You're glutton. Okay? If you have to go every Saturday or Sunday, if I'm wrong, I apologize. If you have to go to the car show, which is very popular here in El Paso, if you have to go to that show, then every time to see even the same cars you've already seen, then it becomes a material pleasure. You're going there just to look at the car and to try to get and understand what's going on with that car. Well, I got to see these cars, but you saw it last week. Yeah, I got to see it again. Maybe, maybe I don't understand. Maybe there's something new about this car. It is gluttony. Like I said, and we have to remind ourselves, gluttony is not about just food. Okay? Gluttony is not about just food. It is creating an idol out of something material. Anything you do, as you remember I said, anything can include drinking, screen time, lustful thoughts, and behaviors. Anything, any type of obsess obsessive love for material things. So our first scripture today is going to, for this is going to come out of Exodus chapter 20 verse 3. It says, you shall have no other God before me. So anything that keeps you out of church on Sunday, unless you're working, now mind you, God understands if you have a job where you have to work on Sundays. Okay? He understands. But if you focus all your week around materialistic things that you want to do, maybe it's, uh, I'll use screen time. Oh my gosh, there's a show coming on tonight. I gotta see it. Oh, they moved it to Sunday morning. Or they moved it to Bible time where I'm supposed to go and, and study the Bible. And after a while, the enemy will use that as a norm to keep you from the Word of God. And say, I'm trying to think of a movie or something that's come out that, has, that takes people's time. That's not a bad movie. Not a good movie, but it takes people's time. So, um, can't think of anything off my head. If you can think of one, you can send it to me. I can't think of one off the top of my head that would take you away from a, a weekly thing. Of, I can't even think of one off the top of my head. But let's put it this way. Everybody remembers Blockbuster. I'm sure. And in Blockbuster, all the newest movies... We, when I lived in Europe, we would go and we would rent seven to ten movies on the weekend. One person, that one person would record those movies all through the weekend, times three, to give them out to 
the other parts of us that was involved in this group. So, say it's my turn this weekend. I would spend that whole weekend recording. So you know I didn't go to church. You know I didn't read the Bible. You know I didn't pray. I was recording. Recording. Next week it'd be someone else. But trust me, next weekend I was watching the movies I just recorded. Even though I watched them when I recorded them, I was still watching them. See, that, that's the kind of screen time where it just eats up your time. And if you've watched movies, most movies are an hour and a half. If you go to the movie theater to see that movie, standing in line, popcorn, all that stuff, you're probably there at the movie theater three hours. And now it's eating up your time. Sometimes men and women will sit there on lustful thoughts and behaviors and obsessions. Like I said, I would go with, I used to collect baseball cards. I would spend my Saturday and Sundays at the flea market. They got them here, but it's different. This was in Georgia. And I would spend my whole weekend buying and trading baseball cards. And I would be there the whole weekend buying and trading, buying and trading. I didn't really make any money, okay? Most of the time I broke even. But I would spend the whole weekend there and then my whole weekend is gone and I'm back to work. But I did that. Our next one. This is one that uh, hopefully will open to people's eyes. It comes to us from Proverbs. Chapter 23, verse 21. And it says, For the drunkard and the glutton, will come to poverty and drowsiness will clothe a man with rags. If you're drinking a lot, if you're buying movies or even baseball cards and you're so much into this collecting and this materialistic stuff, how many of us can admit that it's going to start taking money out of your pocket? I can take my, my wallet out right now, set it here and know for a fact that when I used to do this, any money I had would be gone. And then I would have to go home. And I'll give an example. In 1981, 80, 1980 I think it was. Okay, most of you probably weren't born in 1980. I went to the club. I'm not a big drinker, okay? Never have been. But I went to the club. I came home that night. Don't know how I got home, but I woke up in my bed. I went to the PX, which is a post exchange, which is like a convenience store to get me cigarettes. When I was going in there, I opened my wallet because I knew I had to, I wanted to make sure I had enough money and there was nothing in there. It was empty completely. And I'm thinking, did I get robbed? I know I went to the club last night, but I don't really remember what happened. What happened to my money? And I ran into a friend, and a friend was telling me how they had such a good time, and we all had a such a good time. He said, Dale, you had a such a good time, and you bought everybody drinks. That's how much of a good time you had. Well, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't remember a good time. I know the after effects was an empty wallet. And I still had to give money for rent. But I had none because I spent it all. Because I indulged in alcohol. Now, where it says there, the glutton will come to poverty. Well, I'm in poverty now because now I have to go borrow money to pay my rent. To feed my family. Because I have none. Because I drank it. And actually, I didn't drink it. Everybody else drank it. So, just keep that in mind. The enemy, when it comes to gluttony, the enemy will use whatever he can to keep you in poverty. Whatever he can. The more he keeps you with no money, the more you cannot go ahead because you're going to have to work more to get more money. And he's going to take that money and then you're not having time with him. And, you know, we have to have time with the Lord. We have to. We have to have time in prayer. Okay? So the next one, like I said, we're only talking about four today. So the next one we're going to talk about is greed. Now, 
in greed. It's an intense and selfish desire for something, especially wealth, power, or food. A person can be insatiable, hungry for money, but also for fame, possessions, attention, compliments, gifts, other person's time or more. Reed has a big uh, open door there. So, we know that you can be greedy for wealth and power. That's kind of a give me. You can be greedy for food. You, um, I'm, I'm not sure anybody's had this experience, but um, I read uh, one time in the paper that they asked this man to read a Chinese buffet. They asked him to leave. They said, look, you got to leave. And he said, why? He says, all you can eat for $18.99. And they said, but you've been here for four hours. And he said, yeah, but I'm still hungry. He was taking advantage. He was greedy. He was taking advantage of all that food that a normal person would sit down and eat maybe an hour and then leave. A person can be insatiable, hungry for money. I got to work this Sunday because I need money. What do you need money for? Well, I'm just saving up then you don't really need money. You're just trying to get ahead and put extra money in your pocket but so you take the time away from God so that you can have time to get money to put in your pocket. We know with the explosion of TikTok that many people want to get famous. So we see in there people who will lower their inhibitions, lower their standards to get on TikTok you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. I believe the videos are only eight seconds. Maybe, give or less. And so they'll do that. And then they wonder why people don't like them. When you put yourself out there like this, looking for fame, and you're willing to do stuff, things can happen. One, people can make fun of you. Two, like the uh, Tide Challenge. I don't know if anybody remembers hearing about that. The Tide Pod Challenge, where people would eat the Tide Pie, the Tide Pod, to show they were man or woman enough. I don't know. Some got sick. Some got extremely sick. But all this is done for fame. That's greed, because that fame will only last until the next video, and or till people get bored of it, and then you're gonna have to do something else. Possessions. We know there's greed. I'm going to go there. If you've grown up in poverty, never having stuff, you can become greedy for possessions. You can become greedy for possessions. I got to have four computers because when I grew up, well, I can't use me, okay, because when I grew up, they didn't have computers. So they didn't have computers then I have nothing anyway. But you young people, you grew up, they got computers now. Maybe in your house your mom had one. Everybody had to share it. You're a family of six. Now you're in your own place. First thing you want to do is go to rent a center and buy a computer on credit. And you're going to get the best one because if you like gaming, you want something that's going to be able to game too. Now the enemy through that greed is going to start, not only is he going to give you this possession that you can show off to people, but he's also going to start stealing your time. Yeah, people will come around, they'll give you attention, they'll give you compliments. But it's going to steal your time. Now, you're going to be greedy to try to figure out how you can do what you do and still have time. So let's look at our first verse, and it comes from Proverbs chapter 1, verse 19. And it says, So are the ways of everyone who is greedy for gain. It takes away the life of its owner. When you're greedy for stuff, and you're always trying to have the next best thing, the next best car, I work three jobs, not that I have to, but that because I want to buy a new car, or I want to fix 
the car I have to make it look better so other people give me compliments on the car. There's a guy, I don't know his name, which is okay. I'll, I'll, every now and then I'll see him on YouTube and he'll talk about upgrades to his Mustang. I just put this new thing on my Mustang. I just put this new spoiler on. And people always respond back, oh, that's so cool and stuff. But he's working extended hours at work to have that. And so now the enemy has got him greedy for the compliments that other people get him and the attention for something that as soon as he gets the upgrade, people let it go. They don't even care anymore. It's done. It's finished. And then they let it go. It doesn't matter now. Our next one comes to us from Ephesians chapter 4, verse 19. And it says, Who, being past feeling, has given themselves over to lewdness, to the work of all uncleanliness with greediness. See, once you start thinking you have to work and have this and this and that, you start to take away and, and this is exactly true if you got to work more to have the additions in your house or to have um, brand new furniture I, I got leather furniture in my house guys I got to have it I have to have leather furniture because I want people when they come in to see that I have wealth now I'm going to have to work in that work, not only in a, am I stealing from God, but I'm going to start stealing from my family. Because I'm not going to give my wife or my husband the time, or my children the time that they deserve to have me there to be a loving parent. And so now I've taught that child when that child gets older. And this is a known fact. Now I've taught that child when they get older to focus on money and wealth. And I'm now, not me, okay, not me. I'm now 80 years old, and I'm asking my son, how come you don't come see me anymore? What's up? Well, I'm working. What are you working for? You own your house. You own your cars. Well, Dad, i got to work. So now you've taught your child to be greedy for materialistic stuff. And that child will do it, but it's, it's, it's all fault. You brought that in through this greed, greediness, this deadly sin of greediness and greediness today I, I'll give you one we were on the road two weeks ago in Euless, Texas coming back I saw this guy with a motorhome I want a motorhome so I saw this guy with a motorhome and I thought must be nice that's a nice motorhome it was like 40 feet maybe 50 feet definitely diesel had like four outputs that were where they come out the sides and stuff and, and I, I had looked at those and I saw just how nice they were and stuff but what stopped me from buying is that they're like a hundred and fifty to two hundred thousand dollars that's more than my house to drive it that and realistically I know it'll sit more in the yard than it'll be on the road going somewhere Unless I sell my house and I gotta live in it. But that's what the enemy does. He gets you to where now I'm gonna go get that job. Because I'm retired, so they're, you know, I only got a certain amount of money coming in. So now I'm gonna go get that job and I'm gonna work those hours so that I can pay for something I don't really need. That someone might come by my house and drive by one day and go, oh wow, that's a nice motorhome. That's really nice. There's a guy here in the neighborhood, I would never, I can't mention his name because I don't know him. He has a nice one there that sets in his yard, and I'll be honest with you, for a whole year I drove my daughter to school. The art, that, that motorhome sat there, never moved. That's why I'm telling you, when we start getting into that materialistic stuff, that greed, the enemy will run with it, okay? Now, our last one for today spend a little bit of time on this one greed I mean greed is it if you're out there and you're trying to work and, and take time away from your family a time from God then money is going to never be enough you're never going to have enough money because you're always going to be looking for money if 
if you're into cars, you're going to be looking to fix up your car. Now, I'm not talking the guy who has a car that breaks down and he's like, ah, oh, i got to fix my car. I'm talking about the guy who's doing upgrades to his car constantly spending, I don't know, I know let's say a turbocharger on a car is six, seven hundred thousand, or six or seven hundred dollars, not thousand, okay, hundred dollars, plus the time to put it in. It takes a day to put it in. Then you got to test it. All that stuff for something that you're driving to work and you only work two or three miles from your house. But you need furniture. Maybe you need a new TV. Maybe you need groceries in your house. But that thing takes priority. Our last one for today. Like I said, there's seven deadly sins. We're only going to cover the first four today. We have our meal after church, so we want to allot time for that meal and time for fellowship. But our last one for today is sloth. Sloth. Everyone I'm telling you is a spirit. Okay? There's a spirit of lust. There's a spirit of gluttony. There's a spirit of greed. And there's a spirit of sloth. So let me tell you what the sloth does. Sloth, slothfulness means laziness, sluggishness, or indolence, which is the avoidance of activity or exertion. The slothful person is one who not only doesn't want to work, but who is one who avoids it as well. <laughs> when I was a young kid, I would avoid every kind of work my parents gave me. Dale, would you go mow the lawn? Oh, I'm kind of busy. What are you doing? Um, I'm busy. But I wasn't busy. I was lazy. It's that simple. I was lazy. Most kids, if you don't raise them to be exertion, to be exerted, and you let them just sit around the house and watch TV on Saturday, I don't know about now because, like I said, I'm a little bit older person. We'd watch Saturday cartoons from the time they come on at, oh, 8 o'clock till noon. And we only watched them 8 to noon because my dad came in. And when my dad came in, that means no more cartoons because he's going to watch the news whether you like it or not okay so he would come in and he would turn on news cartoons are done you had to go do something else but all that time that we sat there breeds laziness because I don't know many kids who work out watching cartoons do we know any anybody, can anybody quote me a kid that works out when they're watching cartoons or are you laying on the floor going oh wow Mickey Mouse is <laughs> oh my, Popeye. Look at those muscles. He must work out. Oh no, that's right. He just eats spinach. Okay. So all I got to do is... I don't like spinach. When the laziness comes in and the sluggishness comes in, it'll make you, even when you go look for jobs, to look for a job that has the least work. I'm going to tell you one that is not. It's the army. Don't join the army thinking you're going to be lazy or sluggish. Or not, you're going to avoid activity because that's a lie. Well, maybe now. I've been retired for about 12 or plus years. Maybe now. But when I was in, there was no, the laziness didn't apply. But kids will tend to look for jobs that don't require so much. Um, I'm trying to think of a job that doesn't require because if you go and you work for a car dealership and you're just washing cars that's physical if you're bussing tables or doing dishes that's physical that's not sluggish that's not laziness that's work if you're serving tables I guess they call them waiters waitresses you're not sitting around you're moving you're constantly moving trying to please the customer so I get it. I'm trying to think of a job that falls in that category. Ah, there we go. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I go to work for a call center. 
because I don't have to exert myself. I just got to pick up the phone. And oh, if they don't answer, I don't lose nothing because I just put a tick there that I made a call. And if they do and they don't like what I say, I just put a tick, I made a call. I don't really have to exert myself, do I? There's no physical in it. There's not even mental. They give you a script to read. Oh, wait, it's right here. Oh, I just got to read this. So I'm not exerting myself. Does it mean I'm lazy? Not necessarily. But if my focus to get that job is so I'm not doing something, or, or here's one, I don't want to get that, do those other jobs because I have to work in the heat. If you work in a kitchen, there's heat because I cook there. So I want to find me a job where there's air condition. Oh my gosh, call center just came back in. And I'm comfortable. And if I do the bare minimum, the, the boss is not going to fire me because I'm doing something. And maybe, just maybe, maybe, maybe I'll make one sale. And they'll let me stay. But I'm lazy. I'm sluggish. Maybe I don't get to work on time. Because I don't get to bed on time. I'm going to be honest with you. This sloth spirit likes to keep you up by putting stuff in front of you to make you tired. You believe you're being entertained, but you're not. It's making you tired. It's making you sit there. I used to watch TV, or no, here's a good one. I used to watch the news before I went to bed. Back then, if I watched the news and it was something mean or bad, it didn't help me sleep because when I went to bed, that's what I thought about. Because I wasn't praying. So I go to bed thinking about what was on the news. Maybe it was a car accident. Maybe it was a robbery. Um, I just saw one in, I can't remember the place where four people were killed the other day. So I see that and I go to bed and that's what I'm thinking on. My mind's not winding down. And I'm not even talking about the screen emitting rays and stuff off it because we know these TVs do. That sets in my mind and keeps my mind active. And I can't function because I'm so focused on what I just saw. That when I do get to sleep at 1, 2 in the morning, I got to get up at 5 or 6, depending on your work hour. I'm tired. So eventually, something's got to give. Normally, what will give is getting up. I'll just sleep in. I'll hit the snooze. That's why they invented snooze on the clocks. I just must have been someone who was really into that sloth spirit because the more you hit the snooze and before you know it sometimes it'll get you back up other times you'll sleep to the rest of it and then you're late for work and you're like oh how did this happen well it happened because you didn't go to bed and get the proper rest the slothfulness spirit likes to make you because then you're sluggish and how many people know when you're sluggish Oh, I used to have to, I used to run to PT. But now I'm tired, so now I'm walking. Most of the time I was indulging in cigarettes as I was walking, so I'm just like, so many things that are not 100% in my favor. So let's look at what the scriptures say about it. And we go to Proverbs chapter 13 verse 4 it says the soul of a lazy man desires and has nothing but the soul of a diligent shall not shall be made rich all right so if I am lazy I may desire to eat breakfast but because I'm lazy and I sleep in and now I got 30 minutes to get to work and it takes me 30 minutes to get to work I can't eat so I'm not going to have lunch if I get to work late I don't know if they do this so people can correct me later on I used to work in this one factory where if you were late they didn't get upset but they docked you a whole hour for every 5 minutes you were late they docked you an hour pay so you know as well as I do, if I'm 10 minutes late, I'm working the next two hours for nothing. And what are you going to do? You have to have a job. 
So because of my laziness, now I have nothing. Because two hours working for someone and depending on the job you do, two hours can cost you $10, $20, depending on how much you make. And let's be real, with the cost of living right now, you can't afford to give that up. But the soul of the diligent shall be made rich. I used to get to work. People used to think I was weird in the army, and that's okay. They did at the task force, too. I would get to work about 30 minutes prior to when I had to actually be there. And people are like, why do you come early? And I would walk. I walked one of my guys out one time to the parking lot. The parking lot's full, and I said, where's my car? And he said, oh, your car's in the front line. That's right. It didn't get in the front line because I was late. It got in the front line because I was early. So now when I leave home, I don't have to walk in all that heat in, in Georgia where it's hot and muggy. I can just walk right there. Plus, it takes stress off me because now I'm not trying to rush. I can walk in. I can drink my coffee. I can put my feet on my desk because I had a desk. I can put my feet on the desk and when people start showing up, I'm just ready to go to work. And, and that diligence, you say, well, how does that make you rich? Because then that means if I go out and I do my own business, I'm going to be motivated to be up there early and doing stuff and out there and doing it. And I'm not going to have that lazy desire of, well, I was going to go out today. And I, I worked in a slate quarry when I was 16 and, or 17. And in that slate quarry, as the day got on, the heat got higher. So there was days I got up and I said, it's just too hot to go make tile. It's just too hot. I'll stay home. And now, because I stayed home, guess what? I have nothing. It's a whole day's wait. But I was young. No one to school me. So this soft spirit will steal that from you and then you'll start to think this is a normal way of life. In fact, until I joined the army, I thought this was a normal way of life. That I'd be living in poverty. But thank be to God, he started moving me even when I didn't want to move. Okay? He did. He started moving me when I didn't want to move. And that boss said, I'll give you five cents an hour. And I'm like, really? After taxes, I get two cents. For an eight-hour day, that's 16 cents. That's not worth my time. And he said this. If you can find a better-paying job, do it. So I went and joined the Army. It wasn't a better-paying job, but it had me meals. It came with meals and lodging which is still a better deal. But it also caused me to go forward. And in the Army, I learned that laziness ain't going to pay because they'll get rid of you after a while. So eventually I had to change, okay? And when I changed, I benefited. All right. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 15. Laziness casts one into a deep sleep, and an idle person will suffer hunger pretty simple if you don't if, if even if you're living at home and say your mom says you got to pay your bills and you're not working and your mom says well no no you don't bring in any money you don't eat and she's steadfast in it and all of a sudden you come home one day you, you decided you didn't want to go to work that week so you took the week off you come home and you're like man I'm hungry and you go to the fridge and your mom says what are you doing you didn't bring any money in so you don't eat well, Mom, I'm hungry. Well, should have went to work. Now, you may say, well, then Mom's supposed to uh, take care of you. When you reach the adulthood, hopefully your parents have taught you that you have to work to earn money. And if you earn money, then you can have food. And then you can have... I'm not saying it's wrong to have stuff. It's not wrong to have a nice car. It's not wrong to have a nice furniture. It's not wrong to live in a decent apartment. But if everything you're doing takes you away from God and everything causes you to put other things before God, then what you're doing is you are falling in these categories that we're talking about. Okay, our last scripture for today, the big one. Well, not really big one. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 25 and 26. The desire of a lazy man kills him. For his hands refuse to labor. He covets greedily all day long, but the righteous gives 
and does not spare. I used to have people when I was in the army that didn't manage their money well. I'm not saying I was a great manager, okay? I'm not saying that. So all my army buddies don't take it to heart. But they would come up to me and they would ask me, they'd say, Dale, do you have a spare cigarette? There was a couple of times I, I was a nice person, but after a while when you were the enemy stealing from you, which cigarette steals my money, they would ask me that and I would pick up the pack of cigarettes and I'd say, only comes with 20, no extras, sorry. And they would get mad at me. Oh, you can't spare one? Well, you asked for an extra cigarette. I don't have an extra cigarette. I only have 20. That's all the pack came with. There's no extras. Because of my greediness, I was keeping it for myself. Is it wrong? But I paid for it. And some people say, well, yeah, you should help out a friend. Today I would never do it. Of course, I don't smoke, so I don't have to worry about that. So what have we covered today? Here we go. Last week we talked about sin. We talked about all these transgressions of sin. And today we talked, we started with our part of the seven deadly sins. We talked about lust, the intense, unrestrained craving, sexual craving. But we added to it because it's also an overwhelming desire or craving for other things. Money can be a lust. Um, the new car can be a lust. Your habits can be lustful. Um, like I said, I used to like to collect baseball cards and I would spend my whole Saturday and Sunday at the flea market trading. And I would be honest with you, I didn't go home with extra money. Most of the times, I broke even at the best. Yes. And sometimes I went home in the hole. And we talked about gluttony. We talked about how gluttony is most people associate it with just food. But it's not just food. It's also it can be alcohol, it can be screen time, it can be habits that you do exceedingly overly. Like me trading baseball cards. Does it take me 16 hours to trade baseball cards? No. But it would take away from my family. And it was gluttony. Because I would I would spend all Monday through Friday figuring out how much money I could spend on that wax pack. And maybe I'll get lucky and I'll make some money. Maybe. I really can't tell you that it happened one time. I got a Daryl Strawberry rookie card. I was happy. It was 170 bucks. So I said, I'm going to hold on to this because this will be worth thousands. When I went and checked it out, 10 years later, it was worth $15. Which was nothing. Because in that 10 years, $15 ain't nothing. But because of my gluttony of it, I had, like I said, when I got rid of those boxes, and I literally took the boxes and gave them to the card company, I had over 30,000 baseball cards. I bought every one. I can't tell you the money I spent, but I can tell you it was a big waste of time. Because after a while, you don't even want to touch them because you're afraid you might mark it or scratch it or peel something off of it, and it'll lose its value. But people will spend hours and hours and hours. Another prime example, I, I think they did this last month, Lego, Legos on the west side. Anybody familiar with that? They did like a Lego show. I think I read it somewhere. They did a big Lego show. People came from all over to go in there to look at their Lego displays. And some of you might say, well, Legos, they're not so bad. Look at the price. I'd like some. I'd like the Army Lego set. I would love it, but not at two hundred and fifty dollars for something I can't really use. 
that won't do anything. They'll just sit on my shelf. And my wife will say, what do you do with that? And I'm not going to be able to answer because I don't want to touch it. Because if I break it, then i got to put it back together. And there's more time. <laughs> See how it steals with your time. And we won't even go on the X card. <laughs> we won't even go on the X card. The hours it took me to put that thing together. So, and I say this because sometimes we're all, we all overindulge in things, in behaviors. Okay? The last one we, or the next one we talked about was greed. We talked about how it, it's an intense and selfish desire for something. You can be greedy for power, you can be greedy for a statue. Hey! I'm the only pastor that does this. And we could put that out there to try to get people to come to us. And then when we get them in the church, we're going to ask them for money. Because we don't do that here, so we don't have to worry. But that all that stuff is greed. If, you're, if you have to... Now, I'm not. I know they say in the in the business world that to to have savings, you should have enough savings. And you guys correct me if I'm wrong. They say you should have enough savings to last you six months, or if you lost your job, you could survive with six months paying all your bills. Let that sit in your head how much money that is, because it's a lot. It's a lot. So some people will work overtime, extra time, double time, triple time to put this money in the bank. They'll put the money in the bank and then they'll do a Dale Corey. They'll look at that RV that I was talking about earlier. They'll look at that RV and go, hmm, I got the money. I, I, I think I can convince my wife. It's a good investment. And then six months down the line, after I invest it, it's sitting in the yard and everybody will drive by and say, man, that's a cool looking vehicle. And like I said, I would take Tendall to school and I would drive down past this one guy's house. He had this nice RV, diesel one, really nice. And I've never seen it move in a year. But I have it. That's what I'm talking about. That, that can be a form of greed. I have it to get compliments. I have it so people will look at it and say, she's got money. Look at that RV. When in reality, maybe I'm barely making the payments. I'm not saying that's them. I'm just giving you a little bit. Okay, the last one we talked about before we close. Sloth. Sloth means laziness, sluggishness. Indult, in, in, indolence which is the avoidance of activity or exertion. I use the example, and if you work in a call center, I am not throwing you under a bus, okay? I'm just saying, if you work in a call center, and, you're, and you only go there to get that job because you don't want to do anything else because you want to just sit, it's not a complicated job. They give you everything you've got to say. And I've done it. I've done it. I liked it because I was in air conditioning all day. It was better than the army where they send me to the motor pool and I'm in the heat all day. But if that's why you pick the job or you, you pick a job that causes you not to be physically active, try and think of it. Okay, I know you're all going to say policeman, but... Uh, did I just say who's Because you're in an air-conditioned car all day, you're driving around, you're watching people, you don't really have... But that's not true, it's exertion. It's exertion. But anything that causes you to be lazy. We talked about alarm clocks. I have a snooze button on my alarm clock, I'm sure everybody does. A slothful spirit will get you to hit snooze and, snooze and snooze and snooze and snooze and snooze and snooze. And then 
and this has happened to me, so I'm talking from experience. And then I look at my watch, and I'm like, where'd the hour go? I was going to be up at 7, now it's 8. Or one time it was 8.30, and I'm like, what happened? Could be a sloth spirit trying to come in. But that's why they put it on there, so they can get you to keep it. God bless you. So, next week, we'll continue on in here. Next week, we're going to talk about anger and wrath. We're going to talk about envy. We're going to talk about the big one. And I put this one last, well, one, because it listed it last, but two, because I think it needs to be last, the pride. Pride. But I'm going to go a little bit deeper on that one, because... We know what month this is, and we know that. Well, I'm not going to spoil it because the Bible is real clear on pride. Okay. So with that, if you're tuning in, we're we're going to pray, and then we're going to close. The next part will be done. We don't we don't put it on the air. We'll do communion. And then we'll partake of a meal. My wife has made a very tasty food. Very tasty. I was blessed enough to be able to taste it for you last night. And I'm telling you, you will not be discouraged. But with that, Father God, as we close today, we just thank you and praise you. Father, we give you the honor and the glory. Father, you've led me to do this teaching on sin. And as we go through it, you're leading me, me into another part that I haven't show, shared with people yet. And I will when the time comes. But Father, it's all in the Gospels. It's all stuff that needs to be said today that most churches won't teach about. You laid that on my heart that we're going to be the ones that put it out there. Father, I just thank you that you've laid it on my heart this isn't the first time I've done it and it definitely won't be the last as we work to help people to understand the enemy's tricks the enemy's tricks I'm sorry I got it turned up a little bit you can turn it down the enemy's tricks as he tries to deceive us he tries to put us in binds and snares Father right now we want to break those binds and snares off everyone here in that perpetual peace knowing that you're in control of our finances you're in control of our life you're in control of our family, our decisions we know Father that if we're looking for wealth and we're looking for status it's not going to do us any good if we're not here if we die in sin and we go to hell it does us no good Father, I thank you that you've given us perpetual peace, that we can go through things today and know that we serve a God who's so awesome, who loves us so much, that you gave your son so there is no sin except for blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. There is no sin we can't be forgiven. Father, show me how to relay that to some people that are dealing with it today. We just thank you and praise you, Father God. Father, we give you the honor and the glory. Bless everyone here. Bless their finances. Bless their families. Show them, Father God, what you want them to do for you. Let them be obedient. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. All right, next week, we'll finish it up. Three more. So get ready. Tune in. Uh, if you're looking for last week's teaching, um, I haven't uploaded it on the internet yet because I'm still working some slide issues out. But it, hopefully this week it'll get up there and this one will follow right after that. So with that, God bless. We'll see you next week. Be safe for the 4th of July. Remember, defensive driving is 
something you're going to have to do this week. It's in the middle of the week almost. All right. God bless. And no